If you want to master your emotions, then you need to learn how to manage your inner chimp. This is what we will be exploring in today's video, by exploring the main ideas from the book, The Chimp Paradox. The author of the book, Professor Steve Peters, is a consultant psychiatrist who is known for his work in elite sport, including working with the British cycling team, and has been credited by top cyclists as having helped them in their careers. The book sets out the chimp management model, which focuses on the three parts of the brain that make up the psychological mind. The first part of the model is the frontal lobe, which Professor Peters calls the human part of the brain. This is the part of the brain that uses logical thinking, interpreting information by searching for facts and establishing the truth. The second part of the chimp management model is the actual chimp, which is located in the limbic system. This is the part of the brain that uses emotional thinking, interpreting information through feelings and impressions. And finally, there are the parietal lobes, which is referred to as the computer. The computer is essentially an empty hard drive at birth, but acts as a storage for all our experiences. It is used as a reference source for both the human and chimp, but is only as good as the information it contains, which include both positive and negative beliefs. These three parts of the brain combine to help shape your personality. The main idea in the book, focuses on the difference between the human and the chimp. Although both logical and emotional thinking can be perfectly healthy, they can lead to very different interpretations and outcomes. Sometimes the two parts of the brain are aligned, but the two different ways of interpreting information can easily come into conflict, and when they do, the chimp often prevails, as the limbic system has evolved to work faster in order to react quickly to potential threats. You have probably heard of the fight, flight or freeze responses that we share with the entire animal kingdom, but the problem for the human part of the brain is that the chimp thinks it is still in the jungle. An example where the two parts of the brain can be in conflict is with diet and exercise. The human tends to plan long term, so is quite willing to eat right and work out at the gym, to reach some future goal or to ensure long term health. The chimp part of the brain however, does not think long term, as it is only concerned with immediate survival and perpetuating the species. The chimp wants to eat those cookies and is quite happy to skip the gym, sitting comfortably in front of the TV watching Netflix. Professor Peters explains that the chimp can be your best friend, or it can be your worst enemy. This is the chimp paradox. Looking at how the three parts of the model work together, it starts with all inputs going to the chimp, as this is the part of the brain that is continually monitoring sensory information, looking for potential danger or threats. When there is extreme danger or threat, the chimp will take over and there will be a resulting in a fight flight or freeze response. If there is no danger or threat, then it will come down to whether the human is familiar with the situation or not. If the situation is familiar then the human part of the brain can relax and let the computer do the work. If the situation is unfamiliar then the blood supply goes to the frontal lobe and the human part of the brain will have to work it out, perhaps with some help from the computer. This experience will then be stored in the computer. Where the model becomes interesting is where there is a perceived danger or threat, but it is not severe. Where this happens the chimp will first look in the computer to see what is stored there before making a decision. If the chimp is reassured, then either the computer or human part of the brain is able to respond. If the computer does not reassure the chimp, then the chimp will take over and react, which may or may not be the most appropriate response. One tactic to use to ensure that the computer is able to respond with an appropriate program, is to rehearse the situation beforehand. An example of this could be when you have an upcoming job interview. Remember our chimp still thinks we are living in the jungle and can easily see an interview situation as a threat, a less severe threat, but a threat just the same. By rehearsing what you will say at the interview when asked various questions, and running through potential what-if scenarios, you should be able to establish various programs in the computer which can take over during the interview. Obviously not all situations can be rehearsed ahead of time. There may be instances where we need the human part of the brain to intervene, if what the chimp wants to do is not what you want to do. However, the chimp is more powerful than the human, and is five times faster, and stronger. This is why willpower by itself is not enough. Rather than try and control the chimp, it is better to learn how to manage it. There are three ways of managing the chimp, which Professor Peters calls exercising the chimp, boxing the chimp, and giving the chimp a banana. Exercising your inner chimp is about giving it the freedom to vent. This can be done effectively in a controlled manner, but you need to allow yourself to express your emotions, saying whatever you are thinking or feeling. However, it needs to be in a safe environment or with someone who knows that it is your chimp letting off steam. This is key, because you do not want to express your emotions in an inappropriate way, at the wrong time or in front of the wrong person. 
Once the chimp has managed to express itself, it will then be in a position where it can receive information, and the human part of the brain can begin reasoning with the chimp by using facts, logic and truths. This reasoning process is called boxing the chimp. A third way of managing the chimp is to feed it bananas, given as either a distraction or a reward. An example of distracting an impatient chimp, if you have to pass time waiting for something, is to use simple distractions like reading a book or listening to music. An example of a reward, could be buying yourself a coffee after doing an errand that the chimp had been putting off from doing. Bananas can be useful for the short term to get things done, but they are not as powerful as boxing the chimp because they don't tackle the cause of the problem. Let's look an example of managing the chimp using all three tactics. Sam has recently joined the gym, as he has a goal to get fit and healthy. However, he may start feeling anxious about going to the gym, as he hasn't really been a gym goer in the past. His inner chimp may be feeling a range of thoughts and emotions including a fear of being judged by others on his fitness level, or lack of strength or his ability to use the equipment. The first step in the scenario is for Sam to exercise his chimp, by getting all the feelings of self-consciousness, intimidation and embarrassment of his chest. After about 10 minutes, the ramblings will start to become more ridiculous and less powerful, and the chimp starts to become tired. This is now the point at which Sam is able to talk with his chimp, using truth and logic to counter the emotional point of view. Sam may agree with the chimp on a couple of points, perhaps it is true that Sam is not familiar with the equipment, and this is the type of valid concern that needs to be addressed. For example, Sam could promise to arrange for a gym induction from one of the instructors to familiarize himself with the equipment, and ask advice on what his workout should be. For concerns that are invalid, like being judged by others, Sam can remind the chimp that by working hard, he won't have time to worry about other people. Sam can also remind the chimp that everyone has had to start somewhere, and if people do look at him there's a good chance that they are simply admiring his motivation for showing up to the gym. If Sam needs to distract the chimp while he is at the gym, he can plug in his earphones and listen to music. The book goes into greater detail with the chimp management model, and how it can be applied to the different areas in your life, and provides a number of useful examples. What I like about the book is how Professor Peters turns a complex subject into an easy to understand practical model. Other books in this field, tend to be too theoretical and have limited practical application. If you are interested in getting your hands on this book, I have copied the link in the description below. I hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please remember to like and hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.